Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Title Town Hall. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO of Independence Title. And today I'm joined by a couple of industry professionals that uh, I've referred business to and I've worked with in the past. We have uh, Paul Richmond, who is our mortgage consultant, Adam Young, our uh, insurance specialist, and Evan Sofer, who is our real estate professional. We wanted to kind of bring everyone on today just to kind of give an update. Now, obviously, you know, the news, uh, everyone watches the news. I don't know why people watch the news. It scares them a little bit, um, you know, but we see many different things going on in the market. We see scare about interest rates. We see inventory coming back on the market. We see spikes in cases of COVID-19. We see riots going on. We see the stock market coming up. So we see the good, the bad, the ugly. And I thought it was just a good idea to uh, chat with some of my friends here uh, live to just give you a little update. And if you have some questions, please throw them in the uh, chat log there. We'd love to answer them. Uh, just tell me who the question is for and we'll be happy to bring it on the screen and answer them. So uh, team, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for uh, having us. Thank All you, right, Kevin. so first question, I wanted to ask Evan there, our mortgage, because a lot of times, I mean, our, our real estate professional, a lot of times that's kind of where it starts. Uh, what are you seeing? I know we did a Zoom a couple of weeks ago. What are you yeah. seeing with the market as far as now that things have lightened up a little bit as far as inventory that people are saying, you know, inventory seems to be coming back? So, yes, thank you, Kevin, and for having me, of course. And uh, as far as inventory, there are thousands of homes on the market in each county. Uh, thousands of homes are selling all the time. And I know it doesn't seem like that to people that are just, you know, going about their normal life, seeing a couple for sale signs in the road. But the inventory is definitely back and has taken a jump since the pandemic started. Um, I will say, though, that closed sales are slightly down in the months of April and May from March. March was actually at a higher point even than 2019, but April and May of 2020 have taken a slight dip, but nothing to be too concerned about. That happens every year. So I don't see it um, resulting because of the pandemic, but the market is definitely hot. I have a listing now that's under contract with you, Kevin, at Independence Title. And um, people are buying like crazy, and I'm honestly as busy as I've ever been now. So I think it's a really good time to talk to any of us if you're interested in purchasing a new home. That's great to hear. You know, yesterday we had one of our best days probably so far this year. Um, and and we're seeing, you know, we, we, we may come close to 100 closings this month, which is was very unexpected from uh, where we were last month and the month before. So, you know, we're starting to definitely see a lot of uh, refis coming on the market, which is fantastic. And we are seeing the inventory uh, spiking. You know, we're having a spike in inventory, which means a spike in, in agents writing deals. So let's shift over to Paul there for a little bit. So we see inventory coming up. What about the rates? What are we seeing with the rates? So rates are, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, holding in place right now. We are at a historic times right now, not only with everything going on in, in the country, but you know, rates themselves are at some all-time lows. In fact, uh, uh, you know, anybody that is, you know, th that has a mortgage already that's, you know, at a higher rate should, without a doubt, think about refinancing no matter what, whether it's with me or whomever, it, 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 they should look into it. Uh, but, you know, rates are, are, are again, at historical lows. And, uh, you know, now's the time to take advantage of it. You know, if you have your, you know, you have a realtor that you're working with, get pre-approved. Um, you know, speak to, you know, to a guy like Evan, who's going to go out there and, and, and show you these, these homes, but you got to get pre-approved first and, and get, take advantage of some of these amazing rates right now. Well, let's talk about the pre-approval process. So uh, can someone still get a mortgage as easy as they were getting it pre-COVID, pre-riots? Like what has that done to the industry of anything? So that's a great question. Um, so uh, Fannie Mae, FHA, you know, conventional mortgages, FHA mortgages, they are, um, uh, they all have guidelines as far as how you get pre-approved, what, what is needed for a mortgage. Uh, since COVID, things have changed a little bit. So let's just go with FHA, for example. FHA says, according to their guidelines, that as long as you have a credit score of 500 or above, you can get a mortgage. Now, there are overlays that banks put on. Some banks will not do a, an FHA loan under 580. 
Um, now with COVID, some have even raised that to over 600. So, uh, you know, there are some things that have changed. There are some uh, lenders that are still able, like myself, to be able to get a loan done for somebody that has a, a, a challenge with their credit score uh, to be able to get it done. So um, the process is the same. Some of the requirements may be a little bit different, but the answer is yes, you can get a loan done and you can get it done efficiently. Awesome. Yeah, I was just on a webinar with a good friend of mine who does a lot of coaching. And, you know, we just say that it's it's the doom and gloom. If you're going to be negative and you think things are bad, then it's going to be bad. If you think things are positive, then things are positive. So I'm going to shift that one down to my buddy Adam there. You know, we're, we just entered hurricane season. I know you were on our show, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, John, how are things looking? I know we had a storm. I don't think it was in the box, but we do have a storm that's out there. What's going on in the insurance world? Well, there's a lot of activity and they're projecting a, a, an active storm season. Doesn't mean it's going to hit us. Doesn't mean it's going to come our way, but we need to be prepared. I mean, people need to look at their policies. And if, you know, you're in a coastal area, you need to look at flood insurance. That's a, an important part of it. But the, the hurricane season, they're projecting to be active. And um, hopefully we won't see anything. Uh, but I would take a look at your policies, take a look at your deductibles, Make sure that you're prepared. Keep your documents in a safe place when you do need it. Um, but uh, all the carriers are getting prepared themselves and putting out notices and saying, hey, here's our claims, phone numbers, and and uh, giving us all the information that we can have. So it's uh, everyone's trying to gear up. It's, it's June. It's what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of our users... Uh, asked a question, do I need flood insurance if I'm not in a flood zone? What if my roof leaks? So I know you know the answer to that one. Let's talk about the difference between roof leak and needing flood insurance. And if you're not in a flood zone, like I know I'm not in a flood zone out where I live, um, but I carry a flood insurance policy. So touch on those two items. I do the same thing. I'm not in a flood zone. Um, I'm in a preferred flood zone. I mean, basically Florida is a full flood zone. It's just some are preferred zones and some are required zones. So um, it's it's ideal to have flood insurance. It's pretty inexpensive uh, for the most part. At the max, it's going to be $516 for the year if you're in a preferred zone. And the difference, like you said, that's the flood insurance is for rising water um, from the outside. If you get her, uh, roof damage and you get water from that, that's going to be part of your your primary homeowner's insurance, uh, wind coverage. So um, those are the two main differences in the two, but I would consider, uh, have everyone consider getting flood insurance. All right. Now let's shift back to the uh, corner there to uh, Mr. Evan, AKA Josh Altman to be, uh, Mr. Flipping Boca here. He's uh, our up and coming rising Boca realtor. So tell me, what, what are you seeing as far as, you know, we talked about inventory. We talked about COVID-19. I know you're adapting. Uh, yeah. You know, you're, you're a young agent. Obviously, you've been doing this for quite some time. But, you know, you're, you're in the business. You understand technology. When I say young, you know, you adapt very easily to the changing uh, time. So what are you seeing right. as far as what are you doing different? Maybe virtual showings, uh, right. things like that, that, that people watching can get a good tip out of if they're thinking about listing their home that maybe their agent doesn't do for them. Right, so yes, thank you, Kevin. And actually, quick note, funny enough, I've actually met Josh Alvin before. And uh, one of the reasons I got started actually was from reading his book, so quick uh, side note there. But back to the virtual showings and all of the innovative things I'm, I'm attempting to do for my sellers. Um, obviously, a lot of virtual showings that I'm doing right now. So some people are very unfamiliar with virtual showings. And really, all it is is either a Zoom, um, like something we're on now, or a FaceTime. And really, you're able to see so much through a FaceTime. I'm happy to uh, walk someone throughout a home, explain to them anything, and um, they can ask me any question they have. So besides um, virtual showings through FaceTime, Something else now I've started doing with my company is a YouTube channel. So we put out videos of the home we, through uh, at night and at day. There's also something called a virtual walkthrough, which basically it almost has you stand in the middle of the home on your computer and you could sort of twist your mouse and it looks around the entire home. So it's almost like you're literally virtually there. 
So that's important. Something else that's important is lots of uh, digital online marketing. I'm a little bit, um, I've done some work with Google and some Google targeted banner ads specifically for my luxury properties to target buyers in other states. So that's something that I've done as well. So with the virtual showings, uh, virtual walkthroughs, and then online targeted banner ads, I know a lot about all that stuff as well as social media. So those would be my answer to that question. Absolutely. Great stuff. You know, I mean, I, I see so many agents, you know, it's always the same thing I say, even about the title business. It's, you know, to write title and close a deal, every title company should be able to do it. Just like every agent should be able to sell your house, but it's what sets one apart from the other is who can do it better, who can do it faster, who can do it for the higher price. Because the buyer is going to buy, the house will sell at some point, but it's who is going to have the uh, most up-to-date technology and, and right. process in order to get the deal closed. So, so great job on that, adapting to, you know, to the COVID-19. You know, we've been closing deals remotely since 2018. So when COVID hit, it wasn't a problem for us. You know, we've been doing it since 2018. We didn't need to learn anything new like others have. And I'm sure, you know, you've been very involved with technology. So it's great. Yeah. All right, Paul, you're up now. I have a question talking about documents. You know, the the face-to-face the -face appointments may not be there. Uh, full disclosure to everyone, most of the people that know me, I, I owned a mortgage, a real estate, a home and auto, and the title company all at once. So all four people on this screen, I have done what they have done. So I kind of have an inside scoop on what they do. Uh, obviously, that was a former life. Now I'm only doing title uh, for, for at least the last probably eight to 10 years. Uh, so what what do you do? I mean, I remember when I used to originate loans, I'd book the appointment and I'd run out to the client's house, make sure I gather all their documents, especially those W-2s so they could never give them to anyone else. They gave them to me. I said, I'll make copies. I'll give them back to you at closing. So at least if they wanted to go with someone else, they'd have to ask me to send them back to them. So what are you doing as far as meeting with clients now? So great question. So with COVID, uh, and I'm working from home right now, um, I, so I have a pre-existing condition. So I'm not going to put myself at risk at this point. Um, and we've adapted, you know, to be able to to do things um, a little bit easier. Um, you know, I remember the days back in the early 2000s where we'd go and and literally go, like you said, to a client's house and and pick up documents and and you know and then you know get them back to them when they come to the closing table. Uh, but now, you know, we have a system that we utilize. It's a secure upload that literally will turn around and and send an email. You select your own password. No one else will have your password where you can upload the documents that we need. And the craziest part about it, the best part about it is it, it stays on top of it for us. So, for example, if we're if we're in need of W-2s, bank statements, a pay stub, whatever it may be, and it wasn't sent in for that pre-approval process, it's going to automatically send out a reminder so that this way you can say, oh my God, I did forget that. I do need to get this. I can upload it. And with technology these days, um, we're I, I like to think we're probably one of the fastest out there. Um, if I have documents, it'll take me an hour to get a pre-approval done, uh, which is you know, is unheard of. Uh, you know, you go to those, you know, to your brick and mortar bank. I'm not going to name any names or anything like that. But if you go to a brick and mortar bank, it takes days and sometimes weeks to get these done where we're trying to get it done, you know, like this. So this way you can go out with Evan and you can go and you can find that home of your dream uh, to be able to, uh, you know, to, to act fast before somebody else gets that home. So, uh, you know, documents can come in either faxed or they can be emailed or through this secure portal, which makes it the easier way. Right. I remember when I was a mortgage broker, you know, one of the things I always strive for was to get my clear to close on the first submission. You want to give it to the underwriter, stack a full file. So, you know, if you got that clear to close, you can close that deal, you know, and, and you just want to make sure you're, you're doing right by the client, getting it done as quick as possible. One of the things I like about uh, working with you is that you add the partner's involved in the transaction on a status update. So every time there's a yeah. change in status, you know, we're receiving notification to let us know along the way what's going on. So that's a great way to uh, adapt to, uh, you know, to the changing technology. So thank you. Yeah, without a doubt. Thank you for mentioning that.
Adam, next question is for you. They want to know about the difference between a uh, broker and a captive agent. Well, a captive agent is a one brand like an Allstate or a State Farm, and that's the only product they have. And a broker like myself, I have 50 different homeowners insurance carriers, 15 different auto carriers, a few different uh personal article floater carriers. So I have the flexibility to go to any one of them and shop for the best coverage at the best price for my clients at any given time. With carriers closing down zip codes or changing their requirements, you know, you have to find the right fit for that client where they are and what carrier it might be. Awesome. So, talk a little bit. I know you gave uh, a presentation I saw where you talked about uh, technology that your company has. Can you talk about that for a second? Sure. We have a software that we put in all the information for the client, their personal information, and also the um, information about the home. We send it out to all 50 different carriers. And in the period of time, it comes back to us with all the different quotes. And then we can go in there and tweak the quote to make sure it's right for the client and make the uh, adjustments that we need to, to make to make it uh, beneficial for them. So the software definitely saves us time and uh, points out all the different carriers that are offering coverage in that particular area. Awesome, good stuff. All right, Evan, uh, I know you do a lot. You know, you call yourself the East Coast, West Coast agent. We're not talking California, we're talking the West Coast of Florida. So right. what do you think overall as far as East Coast, West Coast, What's going on in, in that avenue of the market? Right. So the East and West Coast, um, one, the markets, like I said earlier, are definitely hot markets. Um, don't let uh, any the media or anything like that sway you into thinking that the housing market is is, is terrible at this time or that things are, are moving very slowly on the market because actually it's the opposite. Both on the East and West Coast, the average days on market for single family homes is down. And that's actually a good thing that it's down. That means homes are selling quickly and homes are being priced well. So there's a lot of deals to be had and homes are selling quickly. Um, I will say that in the past week or two, I've been able to send uh, three of my clients over to Paul because they're each consider all three of them are considering either renting or buying. So that's a, a huge request I've been getting recently. So I will say if anyone out there, um, is renting currently or is thinking about uh, renting an apartment or a home versus buying, uh, definitely let me know and I can connect you to Paul. Um, oftentimes, obviously, a first um, a first month, last month in security deposit can be a large sum of a possible down payment. And also adding to that, um, what you can end up spending in a mortgage payment per month, sometimes even less than what you're spending for rent. So uh, that's a huge request I've been getting recently. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, Paul, let's talk about the, you know, Evan's going to take someone out to find him a house or uh, whatever realtor partner they're using. What, how important is the pre-approval process? We talked a little bit about it, but how important is that process in determining the you know right amount of a, a house that someone can buy? And more importantly, how long does that process take? You know, because we see a lot of people, they have, um, you know, it's not even worth the paper it's written on. They get this little, you know, let's call it a pre-qual letter versus a pre-approval letter. And then when all of a sudden this agent accepts his contract, the deal's not worth the paper it's written on because the person really doesn't qualify. So what is the difference between the old pre-qual, the pre-approval that you're doing now? And then how long does that process take if someone wants to go out with an agent, uh, you know, this weekend to see a house? So uh, that's actually a, a, a wonderful question as well. Um, so there's huge differences between the both. Let's just start with a prequal. Um, let's say I bank at, we'll just call it ABC Bank. And you know they have my checking account there, my savings. They know basically my basic information. I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, hey, you know, I want to get pre-qualified, you know, to get a, a mortgage. And they're going to say, okay, well, you know, we see that you deposit your money in here and you know, give us some basic information and you know, based on some numbers, they're, they're going to give you that pre call letter. On a pre-approval, it's quite a bit different. On a pre-approval, um, and by the way, I will never send Evan out on an appointment with a, with a buyer unless they are pre-approved. 
And the and you know the reason is is that when you're pre-approved, I'm gathering all the documents up front. And you had touched on it uh, a few minutes ago, Kevin. When you used to be in the industry, you want to submit a full file. So you also want to have that full picture from the get-go. So I'm going to get the W-2s. I'm going to get the pay stubs, everything that we need up front. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, from that point, as soon as I have everything, it'll take me an hour or two at the most, depending on how busy I am, of course. But it could take me an hour or two at the most to get that pre-approval done. So if if um, um, Evan says, hey, Paul, I want to introduce you to my, my friend, Joe Smith, who uh, would like to get pre-approved for mortgage, I can then turn around, get the documents through that Flowify system, um, have them, I get notified once everything is there. All I do is then I tell a story, I guess you can say, to the software uh, that we have. And that software is going to come back and it's going to say, oh, uh, based on this, you're pre-approved for X. And then once we're ready to submit it, we already know what the conditions are because that approval will list those conditions. It's called desktop underwriter. And um, uh, it's pretty much 99.9% uh, that, that, that that deal is going to go through, provided that everything is accurate. On a, a prequal, they're saying, well, I make $100,000 a year. But when I get the W-2, it's $94,500. The difference on $5,500 a year is what roughly a, a, almost you know, 480 a month, 475 a month. Um, that can be the difference between getting pre, getting a, an actual approval or not being approved on a, on a product. Um, so uh, the whole process doesn't take long for me to do, but it's so, so important that this way when Evan goes and he presents that pre-approval letter, that it's based on fact. And in, in, in my pre-approval letters, I already say that I already have the documents in place and that they've been run through and are already approved. In fact, I'll even make a phone call to the listing agent and say, hey, I just want to let you know about the offer that you just got, uh, how solid this borrower is. It's already been run through DU. I already have all their documents. It's ready for submission other than disclosures. And it makes a huge, huge difference on uh, the, the overall transaction. Okay, thank you. And for those of you that are watching that have asked the question of contact info, uh, in the comment section below, whether it's on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, you will see their name, their company, as well as their direct phone number. You can reach them uh, if you have any questions for them that you weren't able to get answered here. Uh, before we go to the final round of questions, Adam, I got one more for you. Uh, sure. Talking about, you know, obviously hurricane season, what tips do you have that a person can do? Let's say a storm's on the way. A storm's on the way where we're within, uh, you know, the cone of uncertainty. Um, what do they do if they have insurance? Let's talk about people that have insurance. What's a good tip for them? Well, a good tip is to pull out your documents, put them in a clear plastic, something that's not going to get wet if you get damaged in your home. Take a video with your cell phone of your home and everything that's in it. And that way you have it on the cloud and... Um, you know, if there is a situation that you need to file a claim, at least you have some documents to show what was in the home, what the condition of the home was before, and then you can have a before and after. But the, um, you know, you want to make sure that everything outside is picked up. You want to not start trimming hedges or trees right before a storm. Um, make sure you put your hurricane shutters up as soon as you can and make sure that they're fastened properly and, um, and just make sure that everything is in place that you need and make sure you have all the numbers, have your agent's number, have the carrier's number, have the claims department's number. Um, Cause as soon as the storm hits their, their phones are active and they, uh, they start taking calls. So if you have a situation, you know, uh, I would have all those, uh, those items in place. I know it's very important. Uh, you know, I had a claim on on our boat. Our boat sank uh, probably about a year and a half ago, and and it was the pre sinking photos that saved our butt and got our uh, claim paid. After almost eight months of fighting and denied our claim six times, it was those photos that showed the condition of the boat yeah. because they were trying to go off of the age, and we're like, no, no, the boat was up in fresh water. It was on on. Uh, 
you know, on the lake up in Canada. It was only in the water for two months a year. Like it may have been a 15 year old boat, but it was in perfect condition. Like there was not a scratch on it. It looked brand new. So it was those photos that saved it. So it's the same with the house. Very, very important to make sure you take them. Yeah. Interior and exterior, you know, uh -huh. uh, go around the outside uh, before you put the shutters on, take a quick video, take a quick video of the, the interior um, and take pictures of your documents as well. You know, it's uh, it's, it's a good thing to have on your phone readily uh, available to you. Yeah, absolutely. Anything on the cloud is great. I always tell people, though, a little security tip. Make sure you use double authentication, double opt-in authentication, mm -hmm. two-factor authentication, whether you put them on Google Drive, Dropbox. You want to have two-factor to be able to have a second step in order to be able to log in to protect your personal information. Good point. All right. So last round of questions. I hope this one doesn't throw anyone for a loop. Obviously, Evan, you're first. So Paul and Adam, you'll have a minute to think about it. Two, two fold question. One, what sets you apart from your competition? So start thinking about that, Evan. And the second part of the question is how can the viewers on here know what a good referral is for you? So first one, what sets you apart from your competition? Second one is how can the viewers know what a good referral for you is, whether it's for them or for somebody they may know? Got it. Well, first of all, Kevin, I'd like to say thank you very much for hosting uh, hosting all of us and giving us this platform. And uh, answering the, the first part of that second tiered question, uh, what sets me apart from other real estate agents, I like to say, is that um, I have the wow. Uh, the wow is uh, what other, um, I'm willing to do what others won't. And a prime example of that is that in my one of my most recent deals, I worked with a client who was out of state. We actually, coincidentally enough, this was before COVID-19, but we had virtual showings as well as in-person showings. And one time when he came down to Florida, we saw uh, 24 homes in two days. So that is something that agents in my office told me not to do. I knew for a fact other agents wouldn't do it. And I was more than happy to do it because I figure, you know what, even if this deal isn't to work out, I'm going to learn about, you know, 10 different neighborhoods that I haven't been to yet. We looked in Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, uh, Deerfield, Boca, Boynton, everywhere. So um, that's just one of the prime examples. But like Kevin mentioned earlier, I am very familiar with online advertising and I'm just willing to do everything possible for my clients. So if anyone has a real estate question for me, if they'd like to know, you know, how much their home could possibly go for, I will get um, the most top of the line, the most detailed report to answer any question they have. And then the second part, Kevin, um, sorry if I'm taking over a minute, um, but the second part to your question you asked is, um, you know, what's a good referral to me? And honestly, it's just anybody who uh, is looking to network. The four of us obviously are all part of a BNI networking community. And we'd be looking to for anyone who's interested in networking, um, getting more referrals, and also building a sales team. So I'd say anyone that's just interested in uh, looking to build a network. Awesome. Yeah. I love that wow one. You know, anytime I do an interview, I'm always trying to find like one or two tips. Uh, and, and that was a great one. That wow factor is great. What others won't. I love right. it. And listen, that's what's going to set you apart from your competition and make you different is because it's what others won't do. You know, whether right. it's BNI networking, whether it's, uh, you know, anything, anything you're doing, you know, why do people draw to me for fitness is because I'm doing what others won't. I train with the U.S. Marine at 5 a.m. every day, you know, so it's what others won't do. So that's why I've had such great success at it, because the others won't get up at 5 a.m. and do what I'm doing. Um, so that's a great right. analogy. I, I like that one. All right, Paul, you're up. So uh, I guess the, the first part, what sets me apart um, and, uh, you know, it all goes back to when I bought my first house, honestly. Um, I felt taken advantage of. And when I got into this industry, that was one of my main motivations was to try and do something and do it the right way. Um, so that's the first part of it. I, you know, I, I really think that I do things the right way, but my transparency on my transactions and the constant communication um, really sets me apart from my competition. I make sure that everybody knows what's going on. There should never be any surprises. Uh, to a listing agent, even though I'm working with the buyer, why would a listing agent want to hear, uh, you know, five days before closing that there's an issue? So I, I really pride myself on 
on uh, transparency of the transaction, which is why I always, once a week, I touch base with everybody in the transaction. If I have three deals going or 30 deals going, I personally make those phone calls. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as a, 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 a perfect referral, you know, if somebody's walking and breathing and they're looking to purchase a home uh, or they own a home, I mean, you know, that's always, uh, you, know, the, you know, the basics for it. But the God's honest truth is I want somebody who um, you know, wants to deal with, uh, you know, just a, a regular guy that's going to care, uh, care about the transaction, make sure it gets done efficiently, make sure it gets on, done on time and puts, you know, the client ahead of themselves. And that's what I try and do. Um, I have no problem telling somebody that, you know what, if you were my brother or if you were my uncle, I would tell you the same thing. Um, if it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense. And I'd rather turn a deal down and know that I did the right thing than to just do it just to do it uh, alone. I, I don't believe in that. So I think that's what really will set myself apart as well. Awesome. Good stuff. You know, I think integrity is the most important thing with you. You know, I've worked with you on a couple of transactions. I know we have one in my office now. Uh, you know, the follow up, the system, the communication, obviously the expertise. And and I've known the owner of your company for many, many, many years. Uh, we met with him uh, probably, I don't know, 12 years ago. Um, so I've known him for a long time. So your company has been uh, around for a very long time and they, they are very reputable. Um, so great job again. And, and I think integrity is the most important thing. Evan's got the wow factor. Paul's got the integrity. Adam, what do you got for me? Let's <laughs> He's got the looks. I got, I got the smile and everything. Um, I was actually going to touch on the integrity like you just talked about with Paul. It's, it's great to work with the three of you because I know when I give a referral to either, you know, any one of you guys, I know they're going to be handled with integrity. Because one of the things that sets me apart from other agents is I take my time with my client to make sure they understand the coverages that they're getting. It's not only about the price, it's about the coverage. It's about making sure that they're protected in case something happens. That's what insurance is there for. So I take the time, I make sure that they understand what they're getting. I give my input, what I suggest they should get. And um, you know what also sets me apart is that I'm a 24 seven agent. You know, lots of people close down, you know, after five o'clock, Paul will tell you, He's called me eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I've been at parties and I've stepped aside to, to handle his uh, clients' questions. I'm available for my clients at any time. They call my office line, it forwards to my cell phone. If uh, they have my cell phone, I pick it up. I'm available to my clients all the time. People have questions after five o'clock and they want to have someone who's available to them. The other thing that sets me apart is the software, like we talked about, having access to many different carriers and having that availability to offer different products, different prices, different coverages. And, um, you know, I really like to keep my clients. I want to keep them with me for a very long time. I always joke with them that I'm going to grow old together with them, but, um, you know, it's not, I want to take care of them. I want to protect what they have. So a good referral for me is someone who wants to protect their, their interests, their savings, their their home, their auto, um, also real estate agents, mortgage brokers are also a good referral for me. So, um, Kevin, again, I appreciate the time to be on here with these amazing professionals in our industry, and uh, thank you again. You are very welcome. We got the wow thank factor. You. We have integrity, and we have the commitment to the client. So, those are three fantastic things from all three of our guests today. For those of you that are watching, click like, click subscribe, share this video. You never know who you're going to impact by sharing a wealth of information. You don't see many uh, people that have boots on the ground that are doing videos like this. A lot of times you see some marketing videos and it's all fluff. It's no one that's actually doing deals. So here you have thousands of deals under, under our belts uh, and just a wealth of information. You know, We're trying to bring you great, great interviews. If, if you're watching this and you want to be interviewed, I don't care if you're another title company. I don't care if you're in the industry. It doesn't really matter. I will interview anyone because everyone 
is a rock star. Everyone has a wealth of information to share with everyone. Doesn't have to be real estate related. It could just be business related, personal related, fitness related. Uh, bringing you added value is what we're all about. So guys, thank you for taking the last 30 minutes with us to uh, hopefully inspire the people that are watching this. Uh, again, we thank you for watching this. I will put all of their contact information wherever you're seeing this video in the comments below. Uh, so please reach out to them. Make sure you tell them you saw this on Title Town Hall. And until next time, work hard, stay focused, and never quit. Be safe, everyone. We'll see you on the next interview. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you.